is up everybody crooked isle king here welcome to my reaction to death battle season 8 episode 10 wow we're already 10 episodes into the season this is crazy anyways goku black versus reverse flash i'm going to be honest this is probably not going to be the most enthusiastic reaction for me because i know next to nothing about either of these characters i basically just know from the previews that i've seen that goku black is basically a god who switched bodies with goku and started wreaking havoc and the Reverse Flash is a scientist who was obsessed with the Flash from like hundreds of years in the future, but eventually acquired the Speed Force, or the Reverse Speed Force, and traveled back in time to basically meet his hero, but when he realized that he was going to be killed by the Flash, he started to become a villain. So, I'm, I, I know I'm probably wrong about this, but I'll find out for sure in the analysis. I'm basically just going to watch the analysis, make a prediction, and whether I'm right or wrong, I honestly don't care. But I'm just hoping to have a good time and just be entertained as usual. So let's just get down to the reaction. Here we go. All right, the episode's up. We're all set to go. So let's just not waste any more time. Goku Black versus Reverse Flash in three, two, one, now. Boom, 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 boom. Goku, Goku Black. Black. The body stealing arbiter of divine justice. And the reverse flash, DC psychopathic speedster fanboy. Yeah. They say imitation is the sincerest, sincerest form, form of flattery. flattery. But I'd say the sincerest form of flattery is not trying to kill your superhero husband. <laughs> yeah, basically. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, armor and skills, skills to find out who would win a death, death battle. battle. Here we go. What consumes the thoughts of a god? What do immortals dream of with all the time in the world? In Zamasu's case, his one Zamasu. goal was divine justice. Yeah, this guy's got major Final Fantasy big bad energy all over him. As yeah. the assistant to Universe 10 Supreme Kai, Zamasu prized above all else cosmic order and natural, natural beauty. beauty. Oh, that reminds me. Did you know I can burp and fart at the same time? Here, no. let me try. <gasps> Unsurprisingly, Zamasu despised the inherently chaotic wow. nature of mortals, being seemingly unwilling Charming to lift themselves Charming. out of their own cycle of violence and stupidity, like some people I know. Yeah, I know those people too. His heart was clouded. Yep. Until the day he met Son Goku. With yep. God key, Goku could match blows Super with Saiyan the God, God of Destruction, Beerus. Beerus. Their clash nearly destroyed the entirety of Universe 7, a cosmological structure at least nine times larger than our own universe. At most, it could even be as large as 13 times greater than ours. Uh, side note, it's worth mentioning that when two gods of destruction fought, they were capable of casually destroying two of these universes. And since the shockwaves oh, took punches traveled across Universe 7 in seconds, <laughs> oh they'd my have God. to be hitting way faster than light. Goku was tapping into his Super Saiyan God form for this, though clearly not at its full strength. Go, without While the exact multiplier for Super Saiyan Blue is unknown, form, damn. Toriyama himself has directly compared it to the original Super Saiyan form. And don't forget, Goku trained with Whis and fought in the tournament with Universe 6 before Zamasu caught up with him. So by that time, he was way stronger. Here was a mortal damn. with the powers of gods beyond even Zamasu's abilities. Someone who could bring his dreams to fruition. So, Zami did what anyone would do in that situation. Kill his master to become the Supreme Kai, wish on the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with Goku, and kill every single mortal in the universe. And thus, the deities of the became Goku Black. Please, Please Goku, Goku Black, Black, you couldn't be more creative. No, you might be wondering, why didn't he just wish all the mortals dead? But that wouldn't that be, be as fun, way too it? boring. He's got all of Goku's strength and Teeth powers put in himself. by a genocidal Most maniac instead of that lovable okay. goober of a monkey man. And in keeping with Goku's Saiyan okay. heritage and godly key, Black can easily achieve the form of Super, Super Saiyan, Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Saiyan. But with a champagne Wow, that's twist. a mouthful. Super Saiyan Rosé. Rosé, really? Really? What, is he a suburban wine mom? Watch out before he unlocks Super Saiyan Live Laugh Love. He stole Goku's techniques too, like the instant Just transmission, where he focuses man, on a person's key signature to teleport bomb. to their location. The He's even bomb. got the black Kamehameha, which is a Kamehameha, but pink. And, and with a Saiyan body, he gets stronger and stronger every time he almost dies. He just becomes harder and harder to kill. Which really sucks for the rest of the universe, because Black is kind of like if Goku just snapped one day and used his powers to their full murderous potential. Like the God Split Cut, where he surrounds his hands with a Keyblade to slice you to ribbons. Keyblade? What is this, Kingdom Hearts? Uh, 
kill Goku's family. He can even extend this keyblade into a huge curved Jeez. one called the Azure Dragon Sword, which, along with his Kamehameha, confirms my suspicions that Goku is colorblind. Actually, Black's <laughs> Azure Dragon Sword is named after a legendary weapon wielded by one of Earth's greatest warriors, the desert bandit Yamcha. Wait, what? And he can make what? a scythe and slice open space-time itself to create a bunch of shadow clones. Uh, Black, not Crater Boy over here. But his most dastardly weapon Jeez. isn't a key technique at all. It's the time ring he got from his dead master. This oh, ring great. allowed here Black we go. to travel through time and even escape so both, the future. So both combats are able to travel through time. Where he had free reign over the entire universe. And let him team up with his best bud, himself. Too bad Goku and company showed up to spoil the fun. But wait, isn't Zamasu in Goku's body? How are there two Gokus? There's only one Goku in the multiverse, right? But Goku met Black before he met Zamasu, which means Black existed before Zamasu came up with the idea. And then they killed Zamasu before he could do it anyway, but Goku Black was still around? What the hell is going on? Sure, it's a classic what? grandfather's paradox. The thing is, <laughs> Black's time ring prevents him from being affected by alterations to his own personal timeline. So, killing him in the past doesn't change his future, and vice versa. He's almost impossible to kill because even if you do it at one point in time, he still exists at another point in time. And another. And, and another. another. And another. And another. Oh, God, I hate time travel. God. Black has crushed Saiyans like Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks. Mm -hmm. Hell, God even speeds. Vegito couldn't beat him. He even it's merged blue with the universe to become one with everything. Like I said... Major I mean, Goku Vegeta vibes here. It took Zeno, the Omni King, the most powerful being in all of creation, to step in and erase that entire timeline just to stop Black's rampage. How Damn. ironic. Zamasu's higher calling was the eradication of all mortal life in the universe, and he stole the strongest mortal's body to do it. But in the end, he was always doomed to fail. His quest for power meant nothing against a being that would always be stronger no matter what he did or who he was. And the universe ended up being destroyed anyway. It's like one big cosmic joke with no one left to laugh. You've so, been running around making Joker? messes for too long and now I'm going to choke the light from you. I can't wait to watch you die. That was weird. All Mario, that time travel the snake. Flash. Ah! <laughs> one of the I'm sorry, greatest I heroes had to. in history, an inspiration to many across time and space. And there's no better example than his number one fan from the 25th century, Eobard Thawne. Alright, Wiz. We've Eobard? A lot of stupid names for things in our years here at Death Battle. <laughs> but I'm confident that Eobard is the dumbest f***ing first name I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Eobard was completely obsessed with the Flash and dedicated his whole life to studying the Speed Force like a total nerd. Good luck to him. <laughs> Good luck, no man. He's figuring that shit out. But Thawne's life irrevocably changed the day he discovered a time capsule from the 21st century. By some strange coincidence, it just so happened to contain Barry's costume. By experimenting on it, Thawne managed to replicate the Flash's powers turning himself into a mirror of his idol. And you can bet he totally Jeez. crapped himself when Barry Senpai showed up in the future and took him under his wing. It was really? a dream come true. Until Barry realized that Thawne had <sighs> fabricated crimes in order to show up and save the day. Oh, Disgraced, great. Thawne promised to better himself before traveling to the past to prove his worth to his hero, to prove that their bond was special. That's when Thawne found out that Barry already had a best friend. And a family. Yeah. And a life without him. He didn't matter. He wasn't special. He was just a nobody buried, tossed out in the trash and forgot about. Like my Tinder dates do to me. If only. Aww. When Thawn visited the Flash Museum in Barry's time, he discovered the secret identity to Flash's greatest enemy that in his future had been lost to time. The one Barry was fated to kill in battle. Eobard Thawne. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. ain't that a bitch? The shock drove Thon mad. If he couldn't be the Flash's best the, friend, he'd like be Barry? his greatest enemy. Legs. And I guess I'm wow. sure Likes and dislikes dead. Barry Allen, Barry Allen, and Barry Allen. Okay. The Flash family in the past. Revenge in reverse. He'd become <laughs> the reverse Flash. Oh reverse my God. Flash? We're really setting the world on fire with these names today, huh, Wiz? Thawne yep. draws his powers from the negative speed force, negative which he speed generates force? with every step he takes. 
just like Barry does with the regular Speed Force. The negative Speed Force gives Thawne access to many of the Flash's time powers, absorption, including his mind-bending super speed, travel. enough to travel all across time and space in days. He can keep up with and surpass other speedsters like Barry and Wally. Who once ran fast enough to yeah. cross the universe faster than two gods who could teleport. Wally even beat himself in a race. If, he can beat Archie, if Wally West could beat Archie Sonic and Reverse Flash could match up to him, he then... Beat himself? Yeah. That doesn't even make sense. But unlike Barry and Wally, Thawne applies his powers more catastrophically, using them to their full potential without any care for collateral. Take, for instance, his ability to vibrate himself through solid objects. Objects like, say, vital organs. And if he did, he'd scramble their molecules, causing instant death. Thawne did just that to Barry's wife, Iris, and Barry did not appreciate it. Thawne's vibrations no. are so powerful, he can even produce a counterforce that can reverse the destruction of the entire universe. Pretty crazy sounding, but even B-tier speedsters like Jenny Ognats can do the same kind of thing. And when Barry and Wally raced each other, they were tearing up the entire multiverse. Thawne can create shockwaves with a snap, phase into your body and possess you, and even speak at such high speeds that you'll hear his words as though they were your own thoughts. And instead of stealing your speed like Jeez. other flashes, he can steal your time. Yeah, Thon can yoink decades from your life and age you 80 years in just a few seconds. Kinda sounds like your sex life, oh is. <laughs> but Thawne's greatest ability is his unmatched skill at time travel. And he uses this expertise to be as petty and cruel as humanly possible. Thawne wasn't a dummy. He Jeez. knew that if he went back in time to kill Barry before he got his powers, he'd erase himself from the time stream too. So instead, he'd just make Barry's life suck as hard as he could. Push him down some stairs. Redcon his best friend from history. Kill his mom. He even told Barry he'd go back in time and adopt him as his own son. Dude, what the fuck? That's another big difference between Thawne and Barry. Whereas Barry only went back in time to save his mother's life, Thawne often went back in time to try to fix his own mediocre life. He killed his more successful younger brother, his career rival at the Flash Museum, and every single boyfriend his crush had until there was no one left but him. And when she still rejected him, he went back in time again and made her an invalid for the rest of her life. Jesus Christ! This what guy's the a hell? But wait, Wiz, that's impossible. Grandpappy paradox or whatever. If he went back in time to kill someone, they'd be dead in the future, which means... which... Me. Which means he'd never know them and want to go back in time in the first place, right? Wiz, maybe time is a time construct is with broken. no legitimate unit of measurement other than the meager attempts man has made to understand the incomprehensible world around him. Uh, well, actually, Thawne was just inside the time stream when Barry initiated Flashpoint, which rewrote the universe while Thawne was technically disconnected from it. So, Thawne oh essentially broke. Literally, figuratively, mentally, physically, temporally. Or maybe he just hated Barry so much it defied the laws of time itself. Whoa. More specifically, <laughs> he God. became a living paradox, a being without a past or future, literally without continuity. Not only did this mean he'd be unaffected by changes to his past, it made him effectively immortal. Stabbed in the chest by evil Batman, vaporized by Iris in some sweet, sweet payback, or getting Dr. Manhattan by the big blue god dong himself. Thawne was always reborn, unable to stay dead. But more than anything, it made him immune from consequences. Unlike Barry, whose changes to time could destroy all of reality, Thawne could do whatever he wanted. He was impossible to stop with no reason to hold back. Could not he be killed by Dr. Manhattan. From Barry, while he had the entire speed force absorbed into him, and even Wally's infinite mass punch, which has the mass of a white dwarf star. A white dwarf is essentially the remains of a star's ultra-dense core, which has a mass of over two octillion tons. And he took one of those to the noggin and just took a nap. Man, he must really hate Barry if a son to the face can't take him down. But he Damn. doesn't hate Barry. All of his schemes, all of his machinations, all of his insane timeline-shattering threats, all of it was because it was the only way he could think of to spend time with his hero. That's really sad. His costume says it yeah. all. He never intended to be the reverse Flash. He wanted to be the Kid Flash. All Fawn ever really desired was to be by Barry's side. In the end, though, goody little two-shoes Barry forgave him and then vibrated away his living paradox powers, erasing him from existence. Though not entirely. Barry didn't kill what? Fawn. He reset his timeline, removing the one thing driving his hatred, his relationship with Barry. 
Without that, Thon was a normal, happy Flash fan once again. It's comics, Wiz. He'll be back. And uh, when he does, there'll be no running. He'll always be faster. He'll always catch you. And time is always on his side. Still think you can take me? Even death can't catch me. Holy crap. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Pause. Holy crap, that was confusing as all hell. But <laughs> I just can't stop laughing at that monologue that Boomstick did. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, this might take a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously Goku Black has the ring that makes him immune to being affected by paradoxes. So I'm not entirely sure if that would, if if uh, Eobard would be able to affect him. But he could pro he's he's probably got other powers that can that can work around that. I. Uh, Honestly, this is one of those where I'm honestly really at a loss for choosing a winner, so I'm just going to take a guess. I honestly don't care if I'm wrong here. I'm going to go with Reverse Flash for this one, because let's be real, Dragon Ball characters facing DC characters doesn't often go well for Dragon Ball. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Reverse Flash on this one. Again, if I'm wrong, then so be it, but let's just get into this. Three, two, one. Go. Here we do. <laughs> I just killed Quicksilver. It was me, Barry. I was the one who. Oh, oh boy. Here comes Zamasu. Mortal sinners, prepare for divine justice. <laughs> Fight! Oops. Okay, now we fight. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'm in need of your services. What the? Oh my God, dude! I just can't wait for all their time travel shenanigans to go down. Because we all know that this isn't going to do anything to anyone. Okay. <laughs> I think if I bring itself to face through objects, there's the key blade. What do you think of this color? Is it not beautiful? I like the model, but not really my color. They can rip the time. Oh god, this guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, but he can create close to himself too. Why aren't you dead? <laughs> yeah, he can create close to himself to different timelines. He can't be affected by that. If you kill him in one timeline, he'll always exist in another, so. That could end up saving him. Yeah, it honestly looks like some of the sprites that they used in the Flash vs. Quicksilver fight. Jeez. Oh! There's a statue that ends up killing Quicksilver! Come on, where is he? Yep, there it is! <laughs> oh my god! Paradox. 
How truly foolish. Huh? Oh, sorry. Was that important? How do you get the ring? <laughs> Was I right? KO! KO! I was right, okay! This was a fairly tricky matchup to figure out. Yeah, I have bet. Incredible levels of power. Black could destroy a universe like ours at least 660 times over. I mean, a punch at least as big as a star is really badass, but that's in another league. However, there was a lot more to cover than just how many stars or universes they could blow up. At hmm. their peak, both Goku Black and Reverse Flash were so impressive, they were removed from time itself. Yeah. Becoming living paradoxes, making any attempt to kill either of them meaningless. Stupid time travel. It's difficult to determine yeah, who would it figure is out a counter to this temporal invincibility first, but it would most likely rely on a combination of speed and smarts. As far as speed goes, it's no surprise okay. Thon definitely had the edge. Yeah, Black's attacks could reach speeds quintillions of times faster than light, but Thorn is a Flash. Even early in his yeah. career as a member of the Flash family, Wally West could reach speeds that were impossible to comprehend and calculate. There are numerous examples of this for multiple iterations of the Flash, many of whom Thawne was clearly equal to. Plus, he's kind of an expert when it comes to timey-wimey bullshit. And he could likely <laughs> overpower Black and destroy said time ring, too. After all, Thon once generated enough energy to counter the destruction of the entire DC universe, which is True. stated in comics stated to be at least 100 trillion light years in diameter. That's yep. over 1 billion, one billion times, times larger than our own universe. Yeah. And over 70 million times larger than Dragon Ball's Universe 7. It's there we go. It's impossible to lock down the exact limits of Goku Black's upper strength without getting into lots of assumptions and guesswork. He's obviously stronger than Goku was when he clashed with Beerus, but even being super generous with training and power boosts and multipliers, the gap here is way too wide to be able to just assume Goku Black could match this level of power. The DC universe is just too big. And remember, Barry and Wally's race almost ripped apart the entire DC multiverse. It's multiverse. also stress that Goku Black is not Goku. Goku's drive and willpower can push through even the most absurd limits to potentially match higher levels of power. Zamasu took Goku's body because he's more than willing to take shortcuts. It's an entirely different mindset. Yeah, and once he took care of that time ring, Reverse Flash had a lot more options than just overpowering Black. Yeah. With that super speed, he could pretty easily scramble Black's insides or age him to death with a touch. Zamasu may he have could. been a deity even without the time ring, but Goku's body is mortal with a limited range of age. That's Might have really right. screwed yourself with that one, huh, Zam Zam? <laughs> Goku Black was a nightmarish foe, but Thawne's experience with time travel, ridiculous levels of hacks, and frankly impossible speed gave him the means to take the win this fight was definitely not sunderwhelming the win wow. is the reverse reverse flash. flash wins okay i was right i'm on a winning streak i hope you guys enjoyed that episode of death battle all right if you're looking for something else to watch Come on. season two make, last make the next, next right episode someone i know the show all about contestants trying to make each other laugh but everyone trying their hardest not to if you laugh you're out watch the first episode right reverse now Rose. by clicking the video on the side it's a pretty good track oh yeah macho oh, man yeah. and kool-aid man <laughs> Yep. 150. Holy crap. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> okay, I can understand them having an anniversary of 100 having Mario vs. Sonic the rematch, but Macho Man Randy Savage versus the Kool-Aid Man. Just because their catchphrases are, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. So, <laughs> that's gonna be probably just a joke matchup, but I'm honestly looking forward to it anyway, just because of how ridiculous it's gonna be. But, I'm actually very surprised by how this match turned out. It was a lot more entertaining than I expected it to be, especially with, the, especially with Boomstick's mo time mon shenanigan monologue. So, I'm, I'm glad that I saw this, and I'm glad I was right. I'm practically on a winning streak here. Because uh, I'm looking at all the past death battles I was looking at. Uh, okay, I was... Oh, no, I did predict Cloud was going to win against Link. I was rooting for Link, but I voted for Cloud. So, yeah, I was right there. So, one, two, three, four, five. I've, I've got six in a row. This is incredible. 
I, I I swear I'm not watching these in advance. I really am blindly reacting to them. But holy crap, I've I've got six wins in a row, and even for this whole season, I've only been wrong twice out of ten. I'm honestly shocked by how well my record has been this season. So, ugh, this is gonna be this is gonna be really good if I can keep this keep this up, but. I'm going to be honest, I still think that Macho Man vs. Kool-Aid Man is just going to be a joke matchup, but we'll see how that goes. It'll probably be fun to watch either way. So, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'm the Crooked Isle King. Have a great one, everybody.